NewbieHack.com. We provide a great deal of information on our products and spend a lot of time doing this so you don't have to. This is part three of controlling a digital servo. We used a, an 18.432 megahertz crystal, but I've changed that. I changed it to 16 megahertz. I changed to the 16 megahertz because we need to communicate with the, the servo at 1 million baud or 1 megabits per second, 1 million bits per second. And this is defaulted from the factory at that speed, so we have to be able to communicate to them to even set the baud rate. So we have to use the 16 megahertz and it doesn't, it doesn't harm anything. And we have something else in our arsenal to diagnose if we have any problems. The Logic Analyzer by Saley. You can purchase this at newbiehack.com. This particular model, you can analyze eight lines at the same time. You have eight wires here, and you have a ground wire that needs to be connected. I also offer a larger version, which is 16 lines. I'll be using this analyzer throughout the development of this project, because it, it allows me to see what is coming out of the, the, the RX and the TX lines. So if I have any doubt of it's working or not, I can just plug this analyzer in, and on the screen it'll show me exactly what's happening on that line, and I'll demonstrate that many times in this set of videos. I strongly encourage purchasing one of these or a similar analyzer like this to investigate any communications you have on the lines. Okay, let's finish the wiring for the, the buffer chip on pin number seven, which is right over here. That needs to be tied to ground because that's the ground pin. And now we need to tie the pin number 14 to VCC since that will power the chip. So. Take a jumper and put it onto the last pin at the top. This jumper is not going to be long enough. Let's see. Okay. So now we have the chip powered. The next thing we have to do is tie the rest of these leads down to ground because we don't want any interference internally in the chip. So we're going to tie everything to the ground. If you don't, then it could affect the other line drivers uh, depending on what's going on in this chip. Since I don't have enough holes, I'm going to have to tie these two together like this. And for the last hole, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, so now all of the pins are now tied to ground. I could have just connected all of them together and then just put one to ground. And the VCC is going to the, the positive rail. Okay, here is the program that I'm using. It is very similar to the UART communication between the microcontroller and the computer. I'm using, or the, the name of the file is Digital Servo Communication, and I set it for the AT Mega 644A. And what the changes that I've made here, or actually I'll, I'll specify it line by line. The FCPU is now 16 million, and what I've done here is created definitions for the, the TX control, TX control port, and then the TX on, RX off. I could probably call this TX RX control direction. Um, so you have the port is DDRD, port, the data direction is DDRD, the port is port D, and if you remember from the previous video, it's pin D was the control for the TX, and the, I got this wrong actually, it should be six, and pin D6 is turning turning off the, the RX. I have the standard includes, including the UART methods, and I'm using the interrupt because I'm receiving the bytes through the interrupt in this particular case. I could do it by polling, but I decided to use the interrupt. I'm going to try it out and see if it works well. But there's a couple of changes that I had to make with the the UART methods. And I had to put, since I have to put in a, a million bits per second for this, for the baud rate, this is uh, an unsigned long. And what I was passing in was only an integer. So you have to go to the UART methods, find the method that you're using, which is this one that I'm using. And I had to change this from int to unsigned long. And then once that is corrected, you'll have the, the correct UBBR value, which is actually only gonna be zero. So if, if just as a sanity check, if you, this isn't working, if you uh, have the analyzer and it's giving you some weird baud rate, go ahead and just press, put a zero in here, take out the, the formula that considers the FCPU and put in the zero. You can see the, the formula with the six, this should be zero with the formula because the FCPU is 16 million. 
and then you have 16 times the baud, which is 1 million, which will give you 16 million, and 16 million over 16 million is 1, minus 1 would be 0. So this formula will work as long as the correct number type is, is considered here, is passed in. Let's keep that. Go back to the digital servo communication .c file. The first global variable I have is received byte. So whenever this happens, the event that we have a received byte in the UDR0 register, it, lo it, it saves that immediately to the received byte volatile unsigned car variable. And I, I have this here just as a test, but I'm going to take this out because we're using a, an analyzer, so I don't have to worry about that. But if you don't have an analyzer, you can use the, um, the LED to see if you actually got here. Within the main loop, actually, let me talk about the initialization first. In the, the, in, in the beginning, I'm turning on the TX on and the RX off. Actually, I won't be doing this. I should be actually doing this right before I make a transmit. And then I should have another one that reverses it. So I'm listening. So I'm going to turn this off and then turn the RX on. And I have to make one here for it. So I'm just going to copy this line duplicate it and I'll just reverse these. This should be six and this will be four. So I'm turning on pin six, which is my receive line buffer control. And I am turning off the transmit line buffer control. And if you're wondering why I'm talking about line buffer control and, um, and line drivers, watch the previous video. Okay, and the test LED I'm not using. The initialize, initialize UART, I'm doing one million baud. The async double speed is off. Eight bits in the data frame. No parity. One stop bit, and I'm enabling the interrupt so we can use this portion of the program. The SEI, this is just setting the interrupt flag. So the interrupt is enabled in the chip. So within this loop, I'm delaying half of a second. I'm turning off. Look at that. I forgot to do this, didn't I? Off. On. Okay, so that should work now. So I'm turning the tech, uh, the transmit on, the receive off, and then immediately transmitting something, and then I'm turning the transmit off and then receiving on, so I can continually receive while I'm not not transmitting. I would generally, in this particular case, I will not be transmitting within the the while loop like this. Generally, I will wait for a receive byte to find out what the status is for the for the the servos, and then I would consider transmitting. But for test purposes, I want to try this first. So now I'm going to build the file, and then I'm going to program. You can see that I've plugged in two channels. This is the first channel, and this is the second channel coming from the, the analyzer. This is the black. It's the first channel and the second channel. The first channel is plugged into the TXRX line, and the second channel is plugged into pin number one, which is the control for the TX. Okay, this is what the logic analyzer program looks like. You have your channels here, all eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I'm gonna be using this particular channel here. You can set it for the rising edge, you can set it to, these are the triggers. You can trigger it as the as it goes from low to high, like, like from here to here. Let me zoom in. It would trigger if it found this, going from low to high. If I use this, it would trigger on a high, when, when it finds a, a high value. This trigger will trigger when it goes from a high to a low, and this will trigger if it is a low. I had this set as a, as a default, and um, I'm gonna get a whole bunch of A's anyway, so it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna find at least, at least one of the A's, if not more. You can see that I've already done this once, and I have a whole bunch of samples here of that A that I've been passing out of the, the microcontroller. And you can zoom in with your mouse wheel, just like you would any other program. Zoom in right to the spot where you see the, the data. You can set the program for however many samples you want. I have 250 just so I can get as, as many samples as I can get. And you have the um, choice of megahertz. I just put it on 24 megahertz just because I probably could use 16 megahertz, but 24, I just wanted to get a fastest, the fastest um, sampling speed I could so I can get any data that's there. And the, um, and the software will will understand what I'm getting and be able to to investigate it with much more precision. You can see that you have a lot more data right here. You have the width, the period, the duty cycle, frequency, the byte, which is the actual data that's coming in. Um, and you can set these. The T1 
and T2, you can set that as a marker. You can set up timing markers, set that for time one, and then you can set this for time two, and then it'll measure between those two. So you can investigate specific periods or when something happens to when something else happens. I could take the timer and I could actually probably move it. Let's just move it kind of close to here and then take the time two and see if this is actually 500. I'm gonna put it right here. So the difference between them is one second and then 1.5 seconds, which makes sense because one minus 1.5 is half of a second. And I had 500 milliseconds set in the microcontroller. So that makes sense. And it also subtracts it for you so you can see the difference, 0.5 seconds. And then you have analyzers. You can set the each channel to have a specific type. Here are the types. I have mine set at async serial. And actually, let me cancel this. I'm gonna show you what I have set already. The You can set whatever channel you need. I have mine set at the zero channel, which is the first channel here. And the bit rate is not exactly a million. I have, I'm using the auto baud check mark, so it'll actually tell me what the baud rate is, which is a really good feature. You can set all of the parameters, the eight bits per transfer, which is the data frame. One stop bit, no parity, and you can set which part of the bit is sent first, and you can also set the inverted or non-inverted. And I haven't really gone into the special modes, so I don't really know what that is. I'm gonna go ahead and use the one million. If you are following along with these experiments or producing successful projects on your own, helped by these tutorials, please let me know using the Contact Us page on the newbiehack.com website. I would like to feature these on the website to benefit and motivate others to join this creative field. Thank you.